Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. I recently purchased a watch that I can never show you. I love me some true crime videos and TV shows, so tonight I'm going to tell you the story of this watch in true crime style. Be sure to stick around till the end of this video when I'll let you know exactly what watch I purchased that I can never show you. So let us begin. So before I begin, all the names in this story have been changed to protect them. The year was 2022. It was shortly after Father's Day. A YouTuber by the name of Justov Pinkton, his channel had just surpassed 1,000 subscribers. He hadn't even contemplated purchasing a celebratory watch for this event until somebody asked him if he was going to do so. Now, a couple days went by as he kind of mulled this over. And sort of spur of the moment, he decided he was going to do it. He was going to purchase a watch to celebrate 1,000 subscribers to his channel. It had been a while since he had spent a decent amount of money on a brand new watch, instead of fairly affordable vintage watches that he had found on eBay. So, late at night, he pulled up the watch that he was after. He found it for a good price as opposed to its retail, but it was still a decent amount of money. He added it to the cart. Now, when he went to check out, there was a notification right below the item telling him that he had to contact the seller for its availability. Because apparently, it actually wasn't available even though it was online and you could purchase it. This should have been his first clue that this watch was cursed. But he went through with the order and the next day he reached out to the seller and he got a response back, a canned response, stating that they would be working with their vendors to get this item in as soon as possible and when it does arrive, he would be notified. So he waited. He waited a couple weeks, no change to the status. So this time he decided to telephone the company and speak to someone on the line. You see, he was about to go on vacation where he wouldn't really have internet access. And although he had people staying at the house to keep an eye on things, they weren't going to be there full time. There was only a couple days that they would be at the house all day and he didn't know if this would need to be signed for when it got there. And having had scary issues with stuff like that in the past while he was out of town, he really didn't want to have to risk it, but he had kind of waited too long for that status to change. So he telephoned the company and spoke with someone. They had no idea of when it would actually show up, but there was a similar one that he could swap it out for. So Justov thought about it for a little bit and he decided it was close enough to the one that he ordered, he would go ahead and do it. And it would save a little bit of money. This was a little bit cheaper. So he had that swapped out. But when he did this, it was never updated in his order. So he didn't have tracking information for the piece that he had swapped it for. So shortly before leaving for vacation, he called the company again to try and get a tracking number. They didn't give him a tracking number, but they told him that it would be arriving Monday, the first Monday that he would be out of town. So he made sure to let those who were watching his house know that a package would be arriving Monday and if they wouldn't mind keeping their eye open for it, that would be great. Then he went off to vacation. Monday came and went, and on Tuesday he contacted those who were at his house to see if the package had arrived. And a package did arrive. Now, there was a second package that would be arriving that week as well. And he checked on the status of that one, and that one showed as being delivered. So it was actually that box that showed up, and not this celebratory watch that he had paid a lot more for. So all week was a bit nerve-wracking. 
because he didn't have tracking information for this piece that he swapped out for. So he would have to wait until he got back from vacation and he would call this company and find out what was going on. So he got home and he called up the company, waited on the phone for about an hour or so, finally got through to a person only to find out that according to them, it was delivered on Monday. He had a heart attack. So he insisted on getting a tracking number from them. And he got one, pulled up the tracking history, and sure enough, it was delivered. Now he was panicking. In the past, address verification services have had difficulty with his address because the neighborhood he lives in was only a few years old when he moved in. So he tried punching his address into an address validator to see if this was still occurring here and there. As he was punching it in, he made a typo. He left out a number. He cleared that out, typed it in again, made a typo again. This was miraculous because he actually had never even thought about confirming the address because he paid for it with PayPal. And in PayPal, his address is set as the primary address. He had made many, many, many orders with PayPal, and 100% of the time, it just went to the right address because he had it configured that way. In fact, that was why he used PayPal whenever he possibly could, because all he had to do was log in, hit OK, and boom, everything just went to the right place. All the info was automatically populated properly. So he logged in, looked at his order, it was shipped to his old address. For some reason, PayPal, or the place that he purchased this from, did not use his primary address that he had configured in PayPal. So it went to his old address. Heart racing. He jumped into the car, and he drove as fast as he legally could to his old residence the entire way, praying that somebody would be there. And sure enough, there was. There was an old man who answered the door. He confirmed that a package had arrived on Monday, and it was about yay big, about the right size. And he said that he shipped it back. Okay, so now, Justov just had to wait for it to arrive so he could get his refund. A week goes by. He contacts the company to see if it showed up and he just hasn't heard anything yet. Nothing has shown up. He waits another week and he calls the company again. It still hasn't shown up. At this point in time, he's a little bit frustrated. Yes, he should have verified the address, but why did it go to that address and not the one that he had configured as his primary PayPal address? So he asked the person on the line, is there anything? That can be done. I paid 600 some dollars and I've got nothing. Yes, I should have double checked the address, but I have nothing. I paid all this money and there's just nothing. There's nothing I can do about that? Nope. So after hanging up, he was thinking through PayPal, you could file a claim, but it was his fault. So, he pondered that, and after mulling it over for a day or so, even though it was his fault for not checking the address, it was a lot of money. Surely he has to try and do something. So he filed a claim stating the truth, that the primary PayPal address was some for some reason not chosen for this, he didn't change it, and so he never received the item. A day later, an answer came back from PayPal. His claim was denied. So this watch is missing and no one knows where it is. Detectives have searched for it, but cannot find its body. So what watch is it that I purchased that I can never ever show you? It was a Hamilton Ventura. That watch is cursed. I think I'm gonna avoid them at all cost. Thanks for watching. Thank you.